Hi, my name is Phoebe, and I'm a professor at Colorado College. I have taught virology for 17 years, and I even wrote a book for students all about viruses. This short talk is about the biology of coronaviruses. I was in college before there were good treatments that could prevent someone from dying of AIDS if they got an HIV infection, so AIDS inspired me to learn about viruses. On the right you see another virus that captured the world's attention when I first became a professor, namely SARS. The tiny size of viruses prevented us from understanding them for a long time. This is a log scale running from the diameter of someone's fingernail, at one centimeter, down to the size of an atom, almost eight orders of magnitude smaller. Most viruses are about 50 times smaller than the cells they infect. A different way to imagine how small they are is to think of a diagram of a human cell. The internal contents of this cell are drawn to scale in the blow-up on the right. You can see lots of gray ribosomes, the sites of protein synthesis. These are about 20 nanometers in diameter. Most viruses aren't too much larger than a ribosome, but you can see that some viruses, like herpes virus, are a lot larger. Are viruses alive? I don't actually care. They evolve, and biologists study them, and that's good enough for me. But where do they fit into the tree of life? This abbreviated tree of life shows you the relatedness of all cells based on DNA sequences that are universally found in all cells. Working from left to right, you see the bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Look at humanity's closest relatives on this scale, fungi and plants. But where are the viruses? Not here. Viruses do not have any genes that are universally found in all other viruses, let alone in all cells. So, we can't add them to this tree of life in such a simple way. We can sequence the genetic material of viruses, however, and make phylogenetic trees of viruses that are similar to each other because they have genes in common. Here is an example from a publication by scientists in China who analyzed the whole genome sequence of SARS coronavirus 2 when it was first discovered and called 2019 NCoV. These diagrams are a visual form of mathematical calculations demonstrating that SARS coronavirus 2 is closely related to SARS and to viruses isolated from wild bats. All viruses, including the ones depicted in the bottom half of the slide, have an extracellular form called a virion, which is an infectious particle made of protein and nucleic acid. Sometimes viruses also contain carbohydrates or lipids, or both. All viruses are obligate intracellular parasites, meaning that their reproduction depends completely on the cell they have infected. Viruses take over the cell, forcing it to make more viruses. Step one is attachment, followed by penetration and uncoating, which release the virus's genetic material into the cell. Through genome replication and gene expression, the viral genetic material reprograms the cell to become a virus factory. New viruses assemble and are released into the extracellular space where they can infect new cells or even new people. Viruses are very diverse. There are about 10 raised to the power of 32 viruses, so we probably only know about a small portion of them. We have the greatest knowledge of ones that cause human or agricultural disease or certain ones that infect bacteria and were very important in the history of molecular biology. Here we see several viruses from A to F. Poliovirus, Ebola virus, bacteriophage lambda, human herpes virus, adenovirus, and a section of the very long tobacco mosaic virus. All cells use double-stranded DNA to store genetic information. But some viruses have other ways of storing their genetic information. Some viruses do have double-stranded DNA genomes that are circular, like bacterial genomes, or linear, like the DNA that is part of human chromosomes. But some have single-stranded DNA that is circular or linear, and some have DNA that is partly double-stranded but with nicks in one of the strands where the backbone of one segment is not covalently bonded to the next segment. Even more strangely, some have single-stranded DNA that would be just a circle, but instead it is hydrogen bonded across the circle. Still others have a strange circular genome like this, where one strand has a gap with missing genetic information, and one strand has a tail of covalently attached RNA. Most strangely of all, some don't have DNA as their genetic material at all, but instead have RNA. You have probably heard of cellular mRNA and tRNA. Viruses might have single-stranded RNA, single-stranded RNA that is segments, 
or double-stranded RNA that is in segments. Coronaviruses have a single-stranded RNA genome. This is a diagram of the virion of a coronavirus such as SARS coronavirus 2. Its single-stranded RNA genome is in a coil in the center in a complex tightly bound to a protein called N. The virion has only three other proteins, S for spike, M for membrane, and E for envelope. The outer covering of the virus is a lipid bilayer derived from the cell that produced it, and the S, E, and M proteins are part of this lipid bilayer. The diagram of the virus genome is below the virion. Remember, this genome is made of RNA, not DNA. In fact, it has features that make it similar to cellular messenger RNA. For example, at one end there is a 5' methylated cap, and at the other there is a poly A tail. In between, there is coding sequences for the virus proteins. In the blue boxes, you can see the nucleotides encoding the S, E, M, and N proteins that are found in the virion. But you also see many other nucleotides that are encoding different proteins in the green and orange boxes. When the genome is released into the cell cytoplasm, a host ribosome binds to it as though it were normal mRNA. The result is the production of two long polypeptides with segments numbered 1 through 16. Next, these very long polypeptides are cut into individual segments, which fold up into proteins 1, 2, 3, and so on, making 16 virus proteins in the cell. Some of them have roles combating the cell's immune reaction, but others assemble into a molecular nanomachine, such as that diagrammed below. Proteins 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, and 14 assemble into an incredible nanomachine that binds to the viral genome, which again is RNA. The machine copies the RNA, synthesizing more viral RNA. There aren't any cellular enzymes that can bind to RNA and copy it. Only infected cells contain these proteins. As a result, the cell fills up with all of these viral RNA molecules. There are 10 of them. Some are single-stranded and others are double-stranded. All of them are synthesized by the viral RNA copying machine. Ultimately, the single-stranded viral RNAs are translated by the cell's ribosomes, and the result is the production of hundreds of offspring virions, which are released from the infected cell. The infected cell is so depleted by all this viral RNA and protein synthesis that it eventually dies. If you have questions about coronaviruses, please post them in the comments. And thank you so much for listening. Everybody take care out there and stay home.